Hey everyone, welcome back. Um, so in today's video, I'm going to be talking about how you can leverage Heroku and deploy a meal runtime into a Heroku app uh, and leverage that for your projects. Uh, for those that aren't familiar with Heroku, Heroku is also another Salesforce company, similar to MuleSoft. And uh, Heroku provides a platform as a service that enables developers to build, run, and operate applications in whichever language that they want uh, entirely in the cloud. For this demonstration, what I'm going to be showing you is how you can actually deploy a meal runtime into Heroku. So if you, if you know some of the benefits of the endpoint platform, you know that we provide hybrid capabilities. You know, out of the box, we do provide Cloud Hub that allows you to deploy your integrations into our iPaaS platform. But you also have the added benefit of deploying that into a private cloud or on-premise. In this case, we're going to be deploying it into Heroku, and we're going to register that runtime against Runtime Manager, and then uh, also uh, I'll talk briefly about how you can, you know, deploy applications into Heroku as well, uh, and expose those through uh, the, the the app platform. Okay. Um, so for this demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and spin up a Dino in Heroku. I'm going to deploy a meal runtime into that Dino, and then take that runtime and register it against the runtime manager, so I can deploy new applications into that runtime. Um, additionally, within Heroku, you also have the ability to scale up and scale down your Dinos. So through the process and script that I have set up, uh, it'll allow you to go ahead and spin up another meal runtime and also register that against the runtime manager. So let's get into the underlying code. Uh, and it's not really code, it's more of just the meal runtime itself with some additional changes um, that allow the meal runtime to spin up within a dyno and register against the endpoint platform. So, um, I've got a, a GitHub project here that I'll share out uh, within the comments below. And in this project, you can see that I've got a, a readme file that kind of walks you through the process of deploying this meal runtime. So there are some requirements. You'll need to have your own Heroku account. Um, you'll need to have a Heroku uh, command line interface installed on your machine. You'll need to have your own AnyPoint platform account. And then also, of course, AnyPoint Studio. Uh, 7.4.2 if you plan to deploy any applications. Um, I may not get into the application deployment today, um, but I'll run through the process of deploying that meal runtime to uh, Heroku. Uh, so I want to make a quick shout out to Mar, Scott, and Trevor Hall from Heroku. Uh, they got me about 80% of the way there in terms of getting that meal runtime up and running in a dyno. Um, I just had to figure out the last 20% of actually setting up the AnyPoint platform APIs and, and allowing you to register that runtime through an automated process against the runtime manager. Okay, okay so um, in this project, um, really quick, let's go ahead and switch over to kind of the code view or the code changes. So this is a, a, a view of the Mule runtime um, installation folder, right, in terms of the, the, the runtime itself. Uh, and there's actually just four files that we needed to change or, or create or add to the Mule Runtime project. And again, this can be, um, you know, you can take these changes and, and move them into later, you know, the future versions of Mule Runtime. Uh, but this is specific for Mule 4.2.2, okay? So uh, the first file, of course, we need to change is the wrapper.com file. Um, in here, I had to make sure I modified the uh, Java initial, initial memory as well as max memory down to 512. And this just allows that runtime dyno, uh, the runtime running in the dyno to spin up correctly. Um, if it's uh, the default uh, 1024, uh, it'll fail initial deployment. You just need to make sure that you go in and you change the dyno size to an appropriate size uh, in order for the runtime to, to start up, okay? The next file here is the apt file, and this is a file that's needed by Heroku, uh, the dyno, to understand what packages to install into the dyno before spinning up. And this needs the the, JCO, uh, the JQ component uh, in order for the script to run commands against the AnyPoint platform API, okay? Next is the proc file. This tells the Heroku dyno um, what app to spin up, as well as what is the default port. Uh, Heroku by default will assign a random port to the application, um, and this is the, the the port that's needed by the domain listener, uh, HTTP listener, to understand how to route requests into the applications that you've deployed to the runtime. And the last file, this is the kind of where the magic happens. This is the most important file that's needed within this project, and this leverages 
a series of REST API calls against the AnyPoint platform. This will actually leverage the configuration variables that you set within your application and then handle the authentication, the you know grabbing the IDs, the token, um, and then registering the meal runtime against the runtime manager within the AnyPoint platform. And then the last piece that we need in here is a domain project. So this is a, a pre-compiled domain project or a pre-exported you know, domain project that has an HTTP listener that's gonna leverage the port number that you pass to the project, right? Or pass to the app. And this allows any app that you deploy into the runtime to listen, uh, to, to leverage that same HTTP listener to expose the port that this app is exposed on. So I'll probably try to draw a diagram to kind of show um, how that works in the background. But this is all you need for your project, right? Again, this is on mule 4.2.2. Uh, and then the idea is that we're gonna run a series of commands leveraging the Heroku CLI to download and then spin up, uh, deploy and spin up the dyno in the mule runtime and register that against the AnyPoint platform. Okay, so let's go ahead and switch back over to the the project uh, and run through the commands. And I've pretty much documented all the the, the commands that you'll need here um, within the readme file to kind of set up that meal runtime. So first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and set an app name. In this case, I'm gonna call it demo-haruku-mule. And then we're gonna wanna go ahead and clone the project from GitHub and pull that into Heroku. And this will we'll give this a couple of minutes to go ahead and, and run. Okay, so now that the project is cloned, we're gonna go ahead and create the Heroku app now. And that will create the app in Heroku. So if we jump over to Heroku over here, uh, we'll see that that new app has been created and there's currently nothing deployed to it, nothing set up in here. So um, next thing we wanna do is add the required build packs to the app. So in this case, we need the, the JVM common. This allows Java to run on the dyno. Uh, we're gonna need the, um, the, 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 the add that build pack to the Heroku. Uh, and we also need some additional components. So we'll go ahead and copy these commands here, run those as well. And that's gonna go ahead and add that into the app. Okay. And then the next thing we need to do is go ahead and set the configurations, um, you know, the, uh, the configuration variables needed for this project. So I'm gonna go ahead and run through these uh, here as well. So we'll set the environment to be called uh, production. And these correspond to my um, AnyPoint platform. So I've got my production environment and then my organization is called demo. So in here, let's go ahead and copy this, call this demos. And then we're also gonna set the username and password for my account. And then once that's set up, and then uh, for those configuration properties, you can also set those up over here on the Heroku side. So if you go into your application, you go into the settings tab and you click on reveal config variables, those variables, will, you can also add those directly uh, through the console and have those available for the script um, you know, when, when you spin up the, the, the middle runtime, okay? Okay, coming back over here. So the last thing we need to do is Go ahead and deploy the runtime. So we'll run this last command. This is gonna go ahead and push this project directly into Heroku against this application. And we'll give this a couple minutes to run. Okay, um, so you can see that it took about a minute or two for that runtime to be deployed into the dyno. Um, if we go ahead and, and, and type in Heroku logs dash T, uh, we can see that the logs that are getting spit out by Heroku, it's shown that that runtime is being deployed and it's in the process of being spun up. Um, 
And you can see that it changed the state from starting to up. So let's go ahead and exit out of the logs here. Um, additionally, let's go ahead and, and change the dyno size. So we can run this command here, Heroku PS scale web one, and we'll make it a standard uh, 2x. And when we run that, it'll go ahead and tear down the old dyno, um, change the dyno size to the 2x size, and then spin that one up. And this will give us additional memory um, that's needed for the meal run time to operate. So uh, if we switch over to the, uh, the demo-heroku-mule app over here in Heroku now, um, we can see that under resources, here is the dyno. Um, we can kind of see the activity. We can see that here, here's the build log, you know, the same log that we saw over here. Uh, but now this is spinning up that meal runtime and now deploying it into the dyno. So we'll give this a couple minutes to, to spin up. Okay, so let's switch back over to the resources tab. Um, you can see that after we ran that command, it changed the dyno size to a 2x size. And then back over in the command window, let's go ahead and run the log command again. And let's look at the logs for that dyno itself. So we can see over here, uh, again, it has status change from starting to up. And then that meal runtime is now up and running. Okay. Um, if we switch over to the endpoint management center, you can see that there is that meal runtime that's registered against the runtime manager, right? And back over on the Heroku side, if we make modifications here and we spin up a, or change this from one to two and, and add another dyno and confirm that over here in the logs, we're gonna see that we scale that up to two dynos and then it's gonna go through the process of spinning up that dyno, deploying the meal runtime to that dyno, and then registering that uh, meal runtime against the runtime manager. So let's go ahead and give it a couple minutes um, here to go ahead and spin that up. Um, it's actually pretty quick. You can see it registers the application, um, and then adds that to the runtime manager. So you can see there's some of the screen if we go ahead and expand this. And then you can see it's up and running. Okay, and then switching back over to the runtime manager, here is that second dyno. It's gone ahead and spun it up and then registered it. And now you have two, um, two Heroku dynos that are registered against this. You can go ahead and create a group um, of, of servers for that specific project. And then these servers now are available for you to deploy applications to. So I'll save that for another video. Um, one thing again to keep in mind is that this app in here or th these runtimes in here are using have have the domain listener um, project that's deployed into the domain folder so if you are deploying an application into this mule runtime you're going to need to make sure that you leverage this project so in this case you want you want to go ahead and download this domain listener project into your studio and then for your project add that to the application itself so let me go ahead and quickly show you that so uh, in any point studio, let me go ahead and change over here. You're going to go ahead and add that domain project into or import it into your any point studio. And then within any of your other projects, you want to make sure that you change the domain from the default. And this is underneath the mule project. You want to make sure that you change the domain from default to that domain listener project. And this is the same domain listener project that's deployed into that Heroku Dino runtime. Uh, in that case, uh, this will allow that application to listen correctly on the right port uh, within um, that's running in, in Heroku uh, within that Dino. Okay. Okay. So let's go ahead and take this app um, and uh, before I kind of wrap up this video and actually deploy it and, and see how it works. So really quick, again, let me expand this to to show you. So. Uh, within this domain project, it has an HTTP listener, and this HTTP listener is going to be listening on a, a port that's assigned to it on deployment, right? And this port corresponds to the port that was set up here within the proc file. So remember, when Heroku spins up a dyno, it automatically assigns a port that's random, right? And this random port is what's passed to this proc file and passed to the mule runtime and instantiation, and that's the same port that this app is gonna be listening on, okay? So this app, um, let's go, we can go ahead and export this. I think I may have already exported a version as a deploy archive. So um, click on finish here. Okay, actually it already exists. So we'll click no for now. 
Um, and then let's switch over to the AnyPoint Management Center. So you can see in the Management Center, uh, let's switch over to the Application tab and let's deploy a new application. And let's go ahead and deploy an app called Hello Heroku. Okay. Uh, we'll choose one of the dynos that, that we have a meal runtime running on. And let's go ahead and upload that Hello World project. Okay. And then deploy it. Uh, and then really quick, just to give you an understanding of how this app works, it's just going to listen on the default path, and then it's going to go ahead and spit out world uh, in the response at the endpoint. Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and switch back over to the runtime manager. Um, and you can see here, here's the app that was deployed. It's already started. If we drill in here, it's going to show you the status um, of that uh, of that runtime itself. It's been up for about 26 minutes. Um, and let's switch over back over to Heroku. So in Heroku, again, remember it's you're, you're, you're building an app. It's deploying this dyno. It's, it's, it's you know spinning up a dyno. It's deploying a new runtime, and the app is deployed in there. And that app is listening on uh, a specific port, right? So if we click on Open App, you can see that it's going to use the, um, the the app name that was given to it, and it's going to go ahead and route the request directly to that default port, and then return the response back from the app. Okay. So hopefully that gave you a good sense of how to deploy a meal runtime into a dyno within Heroku. Uh, again, quick shout out to Mar Scott and Trevor Hall from Heroku for uh, getting me part of the way there. I just had to figure out how to register the runtime against the endpoint management center uh, runtime manager to actually have that uh, app or that server available for me to deploy apps into. Um, if you have any questions or run into any issues as you're kind of playing around with this project, um, you know, leave a message in the comments and I'll be, you know, I'll be happy to help. Thanks.